My name is Melanie Weller. I am a physical therapist and medical visionary. I am an expert in both the mechanics and metaphysics of voice, breath, and body. I'm going to tell you a little bit today about my clinical expertise, which is in treating the vagus nerve like a pinched nerve. And I've developed a whole system with my evidence-based clinical tests around this and a whole series of exercises to help individuals decompress their own vagus nerves for optimal function. But first, we're going to talk about what the vagus nerve is and why it's important. And I'm going to share with you a slide here. that shows you, gives you an image of the vagus nerve. And this is the only picture I've been able to find that shows the nerve in its entirety. So your vagus nerve is your 10th cranial nerve, which means it comes out of your brainstem. It is outside of your spinal cord and it goes all the way down into your pelvis. As you can see, this entire nerve, this is your brain up here, your spinal cord, is not pictured, all of this is your vagus nerve. And so your vagus nerve exits the base of your skull through an opening called your jugular foramen. You have one on the right and one on the left. And it goes down and innervates your heart. As it goes down towards your heart, it actually loops back up to innervate muscles of speech and swallowing. So it is literally the nerve that allows you to speak your heart. It goes, travels along the esophagus and goes through the diaphragm. It innervates the muscles of your digestive system. So it uh, is what allows the food to move through your intestines. And it goes all the way down into your pelvis. In women, it goes into the cervix and clitoris. And so in terms of what the vagus nerve does, the easiest way most of us will recognize when it gets dialed down and it's not working well is when our fight and flight system overrides it. Because your vagus nerve is a major player in your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest and digest, and its sexual arousal too is largely parasympathetic. And it's also, um, and it, the other side of that is your fight and flight system is what counteracts that. And a lot of us are really stuck in fight and flight and don't access our parasympathetic system very well. The easiest way to recognize when your vagus nerve is dialed down and your parasympathetic is, is taking, or I'm sorry, and your sympathetic system is taking over is when you get stressed and you get a lump in your throat and your heart starts to race, your palms sweat, and you get constipation or diarrhea because those are all vagus nerve mediated functions. Beyond that, your vagus nerve also uh, you, is important for absorbing vitamin B12. You cannot absorb vitamin B12 without your vagus nerve. The How well your vagus nerve is functioning determines how long people with pancreatic cancer survive. In the research, they often use electrical stimulation on the vagus nerve, and vagal nerve stimulators are implanted uh, regularly by, for conditions such as seizures and even chronic pain. And they'll do that at the neck usually because that's where it's most superficial. And the FDA recently approved a vagus nerve stimulator for um, an external one for migraines that you would also put uh, on the vagus nerve at your neck. And I recently learned that in breast cancer patients, they're using vagus nerve stimulation at the ear because your vagus nerve innervates your ear canal as well. And it's in all of your senses. It's involved in your eyes and your, um, your vision, your taste. Uh, it's involved in your smell. Though the research, they're not sure exactly how. They just know that it's related. And so in general, if you're questioning if the vagus nerve is involved in something, the answer is yes. As a physical therapist, my interest in it has been largely with reducing stress because we know stress is the root of all disease 
in dysfunction medically, even though I don't think we define that very specifically and I'm out to, uh, to help people dig into that a little bit deeper. And it also reduces inflammation. It's, your vagus nerve uh, mediates inflammation. And so a well-functioning vagus nerve reduces inflammation. And so that's been my primary interest in it. And I was introduced many years ago to the concept of decompressing the vagus nerve when I took some cranial classes. And being able to give that opening where it exits the base of your skull some more space to breathe. And as I have developed my own practice and my own way of doing things, I've created a system where um, of evaluating and treating six major sites of the, the vagus nerve gets compressed in the body. Um, these pictures here on the left, so because your vagus nerve innervates your heart, it creates the electromagnetic field of your heart, which goes about five feet around from the body as it's been measured so far. This is an image from the HeartMath Institute who does great research around this. And this is an image of the electromagnetic field around the earth. And there's published research that shows that when the electromagnetic field of the earth is disrupted, that that is measurable, and it gets disrupted by solar weather, that that is measurable in the, our electromagnetic fields. And the extent to which it is disruptive to us individually is dependent upon the strength of our interpersonal connections. And so we really are fractals of the universe. The, what happens to the earth happens within our bodies. And it's really exciting to see that that is all becoming measurable now. And so these are the major compression points, the base of the skull. Your skull bones are not truly fused. There is movement there and your vagus nerve can get compressed at the jugular foramen. It can get compressed at the level of the vocal cords, your throat. You get compressed at your thoracic inlet, which is a series of structures that create a horizontal diaphragm here. It get, can get compressed at the level of your heart, particularly on the backside between your heart and your spine. Gets compressed at the diaphragm, which is another horizontal structure, and at your pelvic floor, which is another horizontal structure. It is well established that trauma and stress always affect the voice and the breath. And really what vagus nerve compression does is it disrupts your transverse plane. And that's the plane on which rotational motion takes place. Nobody gets traumatized or stressed and has really great arm swing when they walk. Everybody stiffens, stiffens up. And, and this is the relationship to the bigger universe as well, because when we are not able to rotate ourselves, we get out of alignment on a fractal scale. And the easiest way to see this in the most, uh, at least as I'm aware of, widely uh, taught concept around transverse plane rotational dysfunction is when the vagus nerve gets compressed at the level of the diaphragm. And in all humans, the right side of the diaphragm has more muscle mass than the left. So theoretically, the right side will always win. So people overwhelmingly get locked down kind of in right rotation. And I'm exaggerating here, a really common pattern and something we see all the time. But when we are locked down to the right here and the earth below us and the solar system above us all rotate the opposite direction, we are literally out of alignment on a fractal scale. Getting this rotational motion back does not only improve your physical body, but it radiates out into your entire life and starts to align things on a much bigger scale. And it's always really fun to see that uh, happen in patients. The reduction in pain is, is always exciting, but really to see the way uh, their life starts to align and shift in different ways is even extra exciting. And for voice professionals, by the time somebody has vocal nodules, their vagus nerve has been compressed for a long time at every other site. 
and their voice can't compensate anymore. So I'm going to take you guys through a series of um, videos and information here to build on this and show you some exercises that you can do. I have a group that you can join. I teach for free every week on Tuesdays at noon central time. And you can join me there. I'm, um, but I'm really going to walk you guys through all the aspects of this process. And I look forward to your questions and your comments. You can always email me at ask at melanieweiler.com or comment on the video. And I will, um, I will be happy to answer your question either individually or um, in video format here for everyone to hear. Thank you for watching.